Hi everyone, this is Mr Neil Wright, it's a consultant audiologist and director of Clearwax. Thank you for joining me in this um, quite a complex case actually. So for a patient who attended with a blocked right ear and they had been using cotton buds, um, the initial view that you saw was taken with the eye clear scope. Uh, but I decided to perform the procedure with the wax scope. Um, so I'm using our smallest speculi size here, which is the 3.5 millimeter um, bore a specular and not only has the patient got a really narrow ear canal you can actually see here the suction probe is just about um, fitting within the ear canal um, the width of the ear canal so considering the suction probe is 2.2 millimeters in diameter um, there's very little space within the ear canal now of course um, the ear canals are oval shaped so the height is um, significantly greater than the width and that is the case with this ear. So in terms of height, there is quite a lot of space, but in terms of width, um, there's very little space to play with. And, and in fact, this patient got referred to me by another client, uh, another um, audiologist who struggled to gain access into the ear, actually. And so the patient attended. They've been suffering for quite a while. Um, you'll, you can tell by the colour of this wax and skin. There's loads of skin adhesions, and they have got a titus externa as well, um, superficial, um, you would, there's a slight bit of edema, and now that could just be because obviously the wax is really impacted and um, that's causing the edema, but uh, I've recommended after the procedure the patient use some ear calm. And what was interesting is, um, as you, uh, if you continue to watch, is uh, once I removed this really impacted wax, you can see how impacted it is, and you've got these skin adhesions here at the base of the ear canal. You know, very thick skin adhesions that are attached to the canal wall and also the wax and the keratin plug. Um, when I visualised the eardrum, I, it was very difficult to distinguish all the, the usual landmarks. And for that reason, I went back in with the eye clear scope just to, to get a perspective. And yeah, I, was quite, I, was, I was quite impressed by what the wax scope delivered in that sense. Now, what you will notice is right at the end of the video, when you, when you watch the, the post-procedure examination, is that uh, this patient's got a very, very bendy um, uh, medial part of the ear. Uh, ear canal and I'll come back to that moment so I've decided to use the ear hook here and I've just inserted it into the speculum and I've just rotated it and again with the ear hook it's very little space to play with uh, because of the, the very narrow width of the ear canal. It's quite a few hairs as well matted and that's one of the telltale signs of it when people use cotton buds and they impact wax further in the ear they also impact into the wax um, the dead hair and loose hairs within the ear canal. So yeah, going back to, um, at the end of the procedure, uh, you'll see that the patient's got a very, uh, very narrow isthmus, which is a, a natural narrowing in most of our ear canals, about a half a centimetre away from the eardrum, and the ear canal widens again, and that creates two recesses. It creates a recess inferiorly at the base of the ear canal, near the eardrum, and also anteriorly, so to the front part of the eardrum. There's a little alcove there, and when you've got a very bendy ear canal like this, it's, it's neon impossible uh, with an ENT microscope or uh, the wax scope in this instance to, or even an otoscope to visualize into that gap. And um, that's when endoscope um, is in a league of its own. And that's one of the, 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 the additional benefits of an endoscope is that it can visualize areas of the ear um, that a traditional microscope can't and obviously the wax scope couldn't um, it can kind of peer through little cracks and crevices in the ear canal, little blind spots that are, well, blind to a microscope and otoscope. So the ear hook served me really well there. I got most of the mid canal wax out. Now I'm quite deep in the ear, so I reverted back to the uh, zonal suction probe. And again, you can see the sucker just about fits there. And I'm slowly but surely just teasing this away. The patient themselves were quite surprised by how much wax we managed to extract. So again, I'm just dilating the ear. And this remaining bit of wax and keratin, this is actually impacted on the eardrum. So I've just adjusted the focus there. And I've decided to get in for it, trying to lift this up and away. Um, if I can detach and loosen and mobilize this skin adhesion here, it should help me to mobilise the plug of wax and keratin and remove it. But again, I've just been really, really careful on the anterior canal wall. So you can see the sucker is in very, very close contact with the front part of the ear canal. And because we're medial, because we're near, uh, we're in this inner two halves, or inner two thirds, sorry, 
uh, that is literally skin on bone. It's a very thin layer of skin, less than 0.1 millimeters in thickness. Um, you've got an undercoat of periosteo, um, and that's the kind of the, uh, the intermediate layer between the skin and the bone. But other than that, um, if you come in contact with the bony part of the ear canal, it can be really, really uncomfortable. So I still can't visualise the eardrum, but, I, well, I can I tell a lie. Just about nine o'clock, uh, we can just see a hint of the eardrum there. So this patient did quite well getting the cotton put into their ear, if truth be told. So I'm just lifting this up and out of the inferior recess because it's trapped inferiorly. So we're about two and a half centimeters give or take into the ear canal with the sucker. Um, I didn't want to use a fine end. So a fine end would have been easier in the sense where because it's a narrow ear canal the fine end's a lot narrower but it just wouldn't have the suction power. You can see even with the big sucker it's really really difficult to elevate this away. And slowly but surely we're Bringing this out. So again, I'm just going to dilate the ear canal. And I was very keen when developing the wax scope to have a, a really small specular size, like a 3.5, just for these particular cases. I think we'd have struggled with a 4 or 4.25 to get in here. You can't really have it any smaller than a 3.5 because you're going to struggle to get the instrument into the ear through the speculum otherwise. So it's just one more thin layer of wax and keratin on the eardrum. So it may be hard to visualise, but that's the patient's eardrum there. It is slightly retracted, but you can't really see the typical landmarks. Now there's a bit of keratin superiorly you see there in the roof. I'm gonna go and get that with a fine end actually. But it's a very hard eardrum to um, visualize the landmarks and you'll get a perspective when I go back in with the endoscope. And that's why the, the endoscope for me is, um, as I said, it's, it, it is out and it's legal of its own, but Admittedly, it's a lot more difficult to train people and for people to acquire the skills necessary to use the endoscope because it requires a lot of bilateral integration. You're having to use both hands in uh, conjunction with one another. So one hand with the endoscope, one hand with um, the instrument. So again, it's going to enter the ear. So that's actually the patient's eardrum. It's just a bit of keratin here. I'm just going to see if this peels away now. The, as I said, the, the patient is suffering from it with otitis extended with a bit of tenderness here. So I've just reduced the, the brightness. You can see it's because it's getting a lot of reflection. With anything uh, light coloured, you get a reflection. So I'm just peeling this away. I just want to make sure there's nothing untowards underneath there. Again, back at the eardrum now. The anterior portion of the eardrum, you're struggling to see fully because you can see the canal walls in the way. It's got a very wrinkly appearance, the eardrum, and that's because the patient has been getting a lot of water to flush the wax out themselves. And So again, I'm just going with the endoscope. Even with the endoscope, I'm really struggling to see fully anteriorly, but I think that gives a good idea of how narrow the, the patient's ear canal was. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Um, if you are interested in the wax gate, please do email info at clearwax.co.uk. We should add you to our mailing list. Thank you.